wow, why am I doing this? Uh, all right. I told you I was going to hit you up with a playlist video twice this month, and I'm following through on that promise because this is the one thing that I at least should stay true to. What the fuck am I doing? A lot of new singles and songs that I have been missing out on the past few weeks, a couple of them that I wanted to recover, and, and one also that came out that uh, isn't going to be on this list. I just wanted to mention briefly because it was so bad, and I mentioned on Twitter how bad it was going to be when Justin Bieber tweeted out his support for it uh, on Twitter, and I was responding to that support by saying, ew, what the fuck, because that sounds like it's going to be god-awful, and it came out Friday, and it absolutely fucking was. That little dicky song is absolute garbage talking about being an environmentalist and loving the earth when we wouldn't be in the state that we're in right now if that were true pretty much tries to give like this biology lesson or introduction of different parts of the world him acknowledging that somehow means that he loves it here's a thought instead of listening to that little dicky song just watch a documentary talking about the life on earth and if you don't want to inadvertently kill that life make changes but don't listen to this little dicky song. Now for the songs that I actually wanted to put in this playlist video. The first one I've got on the list is my boy T Grizzly, a Detroit native. Loved this dude's music and I came back to a lot of it. Uh, one song that was supposed to, or one album that was supposed to make my honorable mentions in 2018, but I mistakenly forgot it that didn't, was a T Grizzly album called uh, Still My Moment. And uh, one of the songs on there, Keep The Rest, was fucking amazing. I love this dude's flow, his energy, the pacing. Uh, Y'all know my infatuation and love for Detroit rappers and Bay Area rappers. They have the same kind of style, just a different beat. Uh, but the intensity, just the vigor, the hunger in dude's voice has just always been there. If you don't believe me, go check out his previous song, First Day Out, which I'm sure most of you uh, have already heard. But God damn, that intro, bitch, put the money long at six mile, brick mile, knock your bitch down, pick her up. That It's just it's just hard. It really is. Just listen to it. Anything T-Grizzly related, check it out. But especially this one track that uh, is from an album that I feel not a lot of people covered, myself included, Keep the Rest I really like that track. Getting the throwbacks out of the way, the Future and Young Thug track, I believe it was called All The Smoke. I wrote it down and I figured it out right there. I saw it. Thank you, me. This track is something that I feel like I overlooked when it came out a while ago. Didn't like the album in itself, but this track, I don't know why, it just works. The the the, the subtle piano and, and, and the generic beat, it just gets me. So if you haven't heard that track, go ahead and give it a listen. Another one that's a throwback is the track Woosa from Childish Major. I really enjoy this track. It's really groovy, really smooth. Uh, it's got elements of hip hop and kind of subtle R&B influences, but the way this guy raps is very constant. There are very little breaks in between. Uh, the chorus is, I need a woo like Sa. He's going through the stresses of life while trying to deal with love, but also dealing with the idea that he's broke. It's a great song to me, and I, I've listened to it so many times, and it came out two years ago. Go check it out if you haven't already. Again, now that we're all caught up with that, YBN Corday came out with a new track called Have Mercy. He addresses things from old rappers being bitter at the new rappers. He, and I'm assuming while he's talking about these issues, he's also asking the Lord to keep him humble so he doesn't fall into the same trap that he's actually rapping about. He wants to live this lifestyle, but at the same time, not end up falling prey to it. That's why he's asking for mercy and, and forgiveness. Kevin Abstract came out with his EP, uh, Ghetto Baby, after his first EP, Arizona Baby. And I think the final portion of that will be released this week. But uh, I really enjoyed Big Wheels. You guys know the fucking the snare and the hi-hats leading into what would end up being him kind of falling into this pit of instrumentals that kind of give this idea that he's uh, discombobulated. I actually watched a music video for it after I did my initial review or reaction to it, and uh, it mirrored exactly how I felt. Also, a lot of people have been telling me about Baby Boy. Um, I mean, I see the appeal of this track. Not as big a fan of it. Uh, than I am for Big Wheels because just instrumentally there's a lot more happening, a lot more unpredictability. I do like the sentiment and the humanity behind Baby Boy, but just not as much as Big Wheels. But Baby Boy is still a good track. Conway released the third installment of Everybody is Food and uh, one of his tracks off of it, Country Mike. Like, it's so ominous and it's so venomous. And again, you know, members of Griselda tend to fit that mold very well, being comfortable in the grind, being comfortable in the dirt. And this song gives me that impression. Lyrically, it's not the most dense. Um, there are spots in the song that could be filled up with more rapping if you uh, challenged him with the task of it. But 
I do think that this song works as a, as a healthy representation of just where Griselda members sit as far as artists who can give you the experience of uh, being the villainous individual. Tyus came out with an interlude uh, off of his EP. I, I forgot what the EP was called, but I don't remember exactly when the EP came out, but this WWYD, I don't know what that means. Like what, what, what you doing? I don't know. Is it like what, what in the this track is essentially him uh, saying that he understands why people would hate on him because he's, he's moving in a certain way that uh, elicits a certain behavior. And uh, while I get that, the track itself is a little self-promoting, is a little narcissistic, but when it comes to rap music and R&B music and fusions of it, what really isn't narcissistic to a certain degree these days, I get it, but it is a little, you know, condescending to the listener to a degree, but I get what he's trying to say. I like the song, I like the instrumental, I like the beat pattern, it's very woozy, it's very dark, it's very atmospheric and spacey and everything like that, like I like my R&B, an alternative version of it, he's still kind of throwing some rap elements in here from time to time, but for the most part he's just, uh, you know, worried about how he's gonna move in the world. The song isn't too amazing, but something if you're into that generic alternative R&B sound. K Trinata and Van Hess, yes! Their track, Dysfunctional, sounds like elevator music done right. I heard someone say that this is the feeling you get when you're taking a drink surrounded by a group of friends in a club, and I understand that. I also think this song carries a very strong sense of anticipation. You're 100% enjoying the moment, but you're still looking forward to what's gonna happen next. So you're not even thinking about, this song brings up no memories of the past, it's just present and future. The track and the lyrics offer a completely different emotion. It goes into the, 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 the rinse and repeat cycle of pretty much having sex with somebody and, and how it's the same shit. You come over every Wednesday night, we do the same shit. You give me a mute until round two. You, you want the sugar with the salt. Like it's, it's really specific. And when you get into the lyrics of this song, how this is a very rinse and repeat cycle, but it's funny how sonically the song doesn't offer that at all. Maybe that's the comfortability in the song. Maybe that's the, the devil in the song that kind of makes you feel like this is a very comfortable uh, track that you can get used to and look forward to, uh, but it's something that ends up repeating itself over and over again anyway. I don't know. Maybe that's maybe that's the aesthetic of the track. Maybe that's what he was going for. I don't trust K Trinata. We got Lizzo. Lizzo. L L L Lee came out with her album, Cuz I Love You, and it was a great listen to me. Um, I really enjoyed it. And while I am kind of tired of this whole, you gotta lose certain people to, to love yourself aesthetic and a lot of the music that's been coming out recently as far as the subject matter is concerned, I like that, but I'm used to it. I'm not gonna say I hate that subject matter, but I'm used to it by now. Recently, a lot of people have come into the game to market themselves that way as uh, coming out with this I love you or I love myself album more than I loved this other person. And since I love them, I now know how to love myself better. I get it, I've heard it before, but in this sense, it sounds really good and really refreshing. It offers a lot of pop music that isn't so uh, PG and isn't so censored. Uh, it does have a lot of pop elements, a lot of soul and funk and rhythm elements, R&B elements. It's got a lot of hip hop elements, like especially the uh, really great electro guitar or electric guitar on the track with Missy Elliott, where she talks about, again, loving herself. The intro is extremely dramatic, extremely cinematic. Uh, it brings forth this idea that she's been completely shattered by this heartbreak. Makes a ton of sense, and I really enjoy her voice because it's so animated like in whatever sense of the word it, it, whether she's singing whether she's rapping or harmonizing her voice stays interesting there's never a dull moment with her i especially like the track jerome where she's going on talking about how he needs to become a man before he could re-enter her life or offer her anything she's well aware of what he's trying to do now that she's in love with herself or now that she's able to love herself she can look at him and tell that he's on some bullshit. while she doesn't detest him to the point that she would want to hurt him uh, because she does still love herself. People who really love themselves don't like to hurt other people. She recommends, hey, I've got other friends who are willing to deal with this kind of shit. I'm just not. I really enjoyed this project, man. Like, I really would encourage people to give it a listen. But now people are trying to get her out of there because she said some shit that she may not have meant to say about people who critique music. And I do understand where she's coming from, you know. I offered my two cents about her, uh, her tweet that I thought was a big yikes. But I, I did still understand where she was coming from. As people who... 
uh, criticize music and give their opinion and their thoughts on it, artists are allowed to criticize the people who give their opinion on their work. And even if it's done so out of anger or you have a moment of spite or you're upset that this person may not have seen the vision that you saw it from, you know, they might not have seen it in the same way that you saw it, um, you kind of lash out a little bit. But even if she wasn't lashing out, she still has a right to say what she wants to say about music criticism in its totality. I thought it was a little awkward the way a lot of music publications responded to her saying that you shouldn't be allowed to have a say in what goes on in music unless you make it. Now, of course, that statement sounds completely ridiculous because most of what comes out is in response to the criticism of what people ingest or digest. Uh, half of what we get would never be approved upon unless we made statements about the shit that we were consuming. Otherwise, we'd just be getting handed shit from the industry and we'd never be able to say anything about it. We'd just be fucking zombies being force fed shit without a say in what we have taste in. And that applies to entertainment and movies, films and, and, and sports. It, it, it applies to food and, 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 and cars, vehicles, like every business gets better with responses from the consumer. And that applies to music as well. You cannot be rid of that. And people can, of course, make a living off of giving their uh, experiences as a consumer. And that's essentially what music criticism is. I just thought it was a little awkward the way some publications responded to her being less enthusiastic about their approach to uh, talking about her album. Because if you're gonna critique someone's album, they're allowed to critique you. Even if their critique is completely flawed, they're, they're still given that right. Anderson Pac came out with his Ventura album, really enjoyed this, full of soul, funk, R&B, oh my God, loved this project, thought it was pretty good. Uh, after listening to Oxnard for so long, again, you just realize how much more organic and natural an album like Ventura is, even though I still prefer Oxnard, very adventurous, takes a lot of risks, and is really bold as far as a soul singer entering the hip hop vein. I still really enjoy Ventura, like really one of my favorite projects this year. And of course, one of my favorite songs, Make It Better, which I feel not only addresses the want to stay in this relationship and work on it to improve it and make it better, but my also side interpretation of the song, which uh, leads more to the idea that traditional R&B and soul should still be incorporated in the mainstream R&B and soul and not abandoned like it has been from mainstream acts like Khalid, Kehlani, Georgia Smith, a lot of artists that come through with their uh, newer, more, I won't say generic sound, but less traditional sound. Pivot Gang, I know a lot of y'all like this project and wanted to hear my thoughts on it. I'll be honest with you, didn't love it like that. Now, it's not to say that I'm not a fan of this album because I am, I wanna support it. But I was expecting this album to contain a little bit more identity because to me, I don't really think it did. Of course, it's got a strong rhythm and of course it comes uh, packed with a bunch of Chicago sounds, but in all honesty, I didn't really feel that thrown into the music by each artist individually. I thought I would get a different experience having these many different artists collide onto a song as opposed to having them drown into what would end up being a song after song routine, kind of like uh, none of them had much to offer separately from the project. And I really enjoyed all their takes and perspectives, but I didn't feel it when it came to listening to the songs. I didn't feel like they were finding their strengths and utilizing them to their fullest extent on the songs. I felt like most of them were just coming on to give their verse and that was pretty much it in a very traditional way. And don't get me wrong, I'm sure that's cool. But for me, I was expecting a little bit more. I wanted a little bit more. I wanted this to have a little bit more of an identity to it. There are still songs in this project that I'm sure people will be able to enjoy and find that uh, fit their own needs. And uh, if you're a fan of Smino, Mick Jenkins, uh, you know, Saba, who have all released great solo bodies of work, uh, I would encourage you to check out the other members of this group and see what you can find in their solo material that might give you uh, more of a reason to like this album. Me personally, I just felt like they could have done more together and it didn't really felt like they amounted to more than the sum of their parts on this project. But still check it out, still support them, because I'm, I'm really excited to see, like I said, if they continue with this mode, if they can take it in a more interesting direction. Why have I been a fan of the baby recently? No, like seriously, like I've actually enjoyed this dude's music recently. And I, I really don't know why. He's got like this really laid back tone and demeanor throughout majority of his music that makes it easier to take in, even though he's rapping over these very simplistic, very generic beats. I just like it. Dude's charisma and his voice makes the song easier to get through. And that's really all I have to say about it. His one track off of his newest album, 
going baby i think it's called i don't remember fuck i gotta go get my phone because this it was supposed to be much easier than this but now i have to look through my phone and, and go actually get the song baby on baby was the name of the album and one of the tracks on there that i really enjoyed of course going baby but one that's underrated in my opinion is pony that one is majestic and it's mystical and i like that it's mystical because of those strings those strings make it so like what am, what's about to come my way yeah i'm gonna take my horse to the hotel town road and i'm gonna Right. Hey, Lil Nas X and Old Town Road. Lil Nas X with Old Town Road featuring Billy Ray Cy was a great song in my opinion. Loved it. I think it's nothing but greatness that it, it ended up on the top of the charts as the number one song in the country for weeks in a row after it was removed from the country spot. I love it. I just love that karma for your ass. And it's also the way the universe works. You try to censor something or stop it from reaching its full potential, it reaches it anyway. I love that. Last but not least is Injury Reserve. I love them. Been a big fan since Floss back in 2016. Been fucking with them ever since. Loved their uh, more recent EP, Drive It Like It's Stolen. But their debut album is coming out May. In May, their debut album is finally releasing. I I'm loving how they're getting very creative with their beat selection and, and completely utilizing it to make great songs. I think that's going to be like their biggest strength going forward. And they've really honed in on that with the singles that I've heard from their uh, upcoming album. I really hope that this is going to have most of what I love. I really like Jailbreak the Tesla. Had a lot of those similar elements. Amine went off on his verse on the last part of that song. I forgot to cover it a couple playlist videos ago, but I'm glad that I reminded myself of it because that song was great. Their new one, Corona and Lime. Oh my God. The verse from Grogs, the verse from Richie, like all of it just fits and it works really well together. I'm really looking forward to their new album. I'm, I'm scratching right now because I'm like a crackhead. I can't get enough. Please listen to it and please check out their new album when it comes out sometime in May. All right, that's the playlist video. I hope you got some songs you could take away and don't feel free or feel free. Come, oh, Jesus Christ. Feel free to leave your songs in the comment section down below. I'm very interested in what you're listening to. And uh, yeah, that's going to be all. I'll, I'll see you soon with probably another video. And then Schoolboy Q Blank Face, or not Blank Face, Crash Talk. Not Crash Talk. Wh whatever it's called comes out Friday. So I'm going to go crazy to that. See y'all.